Welcome to the OC Bitches. Welcome to the OC Bitches. We are kicking off season three. We are talking to a guest who happens to be in Norway again. If you guys all remember, we were talking to Billy Campbell just a few weeks ago in Norway. And when we're back, um, today's <laughs> guest is the amazing, beautiful Christine Froseth, Aww. all the way from Norway. Christine is an American and Norwegian actress and model. Her first credits include Rebel in the Rye, Sierra Burgess is a Loser, and Birds of Paradise, and TV shows The Society, Looking for Alaska, woo woo, created hey. by Josh Schwartz. And hey. currently, she plays a young Betty Ford. <laughs> In the first lady on Showtime. She is an OC super fan and she really wanted to be here for her favorite episode, the mall episode, but we have her now to kick off season three. Welcome, Christine. <laughs> thank you. Thank you Welcome. guys so, so much for having me. Thank you. I truly can't express with words how incredibly special this is. Like I, that there isn't anything to sum it all up, all the feelings I'm having right now. So it's just incredible. Thank you so much. Well, I'm an absolute fan girl. I started when I was in Puerto Rico, I actually started watching The First Lady. And of course, I just love all those actresses. And all of a sudden I see this beautiful, fresh-faced woman playing a young Betty Ford. And then I was like, <laughs> I know that face. And then I'm looking and I'm getting ready for this podcast. And I'm like, wait a second. We get to talk to that beautiful young actress. That's Christine. Oh and it was so funny. I didn't oh put two gosh. and two together when I was watching the show because I've seen Looking for Alaska. And oh my gosh, and here you are. And you're just so stunning and just effervescent. And I love what's happening with your career. And thank you for being thank such you. a fan. And Josh, Josh really um, loves you, right, Rachel? Oh, yes. oh I love him. Oh, yes. I love, I yes. love him Josh. so much. I love him and Stephanie so much. <laughs> you know what? You know what's so funny is Looking for Alaska was my favorite book. I think when we were shooting the OC, and you know, oh I had always gosh. had the dream of like playing Alaska. It's such an amazing character, right? And so once, because Josh was trying to make it for like twelve years or whatever, and I, know, I remember him I know. showing me your audition tape, and I was like, "There she is. Oh my That's God. Alaska." Are you like, kidding me? One hundred percent. I was so blown away by you, and you were the perfect person for that role. Wow. And you did such an wow. incredible job. I mean, that is just Thank one you. of the best. Oh, I just, such a fan of the book, such a fan of the show that you and Josh and Stephanie and everybody else, obviously all the other, uh, other actors um, made it just really well done. So good job. <laughs> Is well, no, but thank you. I mean, I I truly feel or felt the same way with Alaska. Like I felt like when I read her growing up, I just did not know how I could ever even try to be that. Or like I, it just felt so far away from me. And still to this day, I feel like she's still an enigma in some ways. So, <laughs> but it means a lot that you read the book, you were a fan of the book, and you liked what we did. I mean, obviously, Josh and Stephanie, they're like the power duo. So yes, and yes. just having them do that story was too much magic going on. Because that book meant a lot to me growing up. So, and then getting to oh, meet Oh, wow. Them. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. So it's like. Awesome. So circle. correct me, correct me if I'm wrong. It was a, originally, you were cast in the role for a film version, correct? And that did not get made? Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure exactly. I, I was in the final chemistry rounds and it was between me and, I, I don't know, two other girls maybe, or is, it was, it's still kind of a mystery, but. Um, <laughs> made it to the final rounds of, of that. And that was my first ever time auditioning. And um, it was an incredible process. But yeah, and then it just kind of didn't go anywhere. I think John got the rights back and he wanted to redo it or something. I'm not sure exactly what the story was. But every year after that, I kept asking my team, so is anything happening? Is looking for us <sighs> coming back? And then Josh and Stephanie showed up and had it already ready to go. Oh, wow. Well, you were meant to yeah. play Alaska, clearly. <laughs> I, I'm like, I, I, it still feels really unreal. But I, um, yeah, I'm really happy we made it happen. Yeah, and, and if anyone watched. hasn't watched it yet, um, please watch Looking for Alaska on Hulu, right? It's on Hulu. Yes, on Hulu. Yes, <laughs> yes. On well, probably other <laughs> places you. as well. But yeah, and Josh <laughs> is like, it's his, also his passion project. So we support it. Um. <laughs> yeah, we all like there was so much care in the in the in the air. Like everyone really truly had a connection to the project, mm -hmm. which is like so rare that you know that happens that everyone has like their um their soul invested and it's it's for all the right reasons. And 
Yeah, that's why I think it ended up being so special. Yeah. So we mentioned that you are in Norway, and maybe you could tell our listeners why that is. <laughs> <laughs> my family is from Norway, so I'm currently okay. visiting um, the parents and my sister, who might come on later, who's also like mm-hmm. the queen. Uh, super. I mean, I don't like. I like to share the title with her, but she knows every single line of the show, and she can. <laughs> you know, you can ask her anything. Like if there's a quiz, I bet you she'll. Have the answers, but she lives here too. Um, so I'm just visiting them, which is really nice. So you were born there and then, or or split your time between the U.S. and Norway growing up? Yeah, correct. So my family is Norwegian, but I was born in New Jersey. And then um, because of my dad's job, we would just go back and forth like every three, four years. And then they're now here and I live in New York right now. So cool. When the OC came out, you were only seven years old when it <laughs> premiered. So... <laughs> How did you become a fan of the OC? <laughs> <laughs> I truly, you know, I don't, I don't know if you guys have siblings. Do you guys have siblings? Yeah. Yes. Older, yes. older sister or brother? <laughs> I have an older brother. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Melinda? I have an uh, older brother. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if you guys have this. I mean, I know it's quite common with siblings, but like, I just wanted to do everything that my sister was doing. <laughs> and she was watching the OC with her friends, like super top secret, because she was also young too. Um, <laughs> so they would always go down to the basement and they'd play this show. And there was so much giggling and so much happening. And I would literally like sneak down. <laughs> there were these stairs and I would just like sit on top of the stairs, like trying to peek at the screen to like see what was going on. It was like super creepy. But I just wanted to be a part of, like, the cool gang, you know, um, for what I thought was, like, the cool gang. And then um, my sister ended up getting mono. Like, I was never fully invested at the time because I was obviously so young and I didn't really understand anything. But then my sister ended up getting mono. She was super sick. And she doesn't watch any TV. Um, but she was just like, I have to revisit this show. And I was just, you know, wanting to be there while she was sick. And we just, like, binged. And from that time... Moving forward, we would just binge over and over again. And like oh, for wow. holidays, when we came back to visit, we would always watch the holiday episodes. Like we were hardcore. And it was me, my sister, my dad, and my mother. We would always watch together. Oh my, oh gosh, my so gosh. <laughs> yeah, they would end that up joining. So like they became, <laughs> because my sister and I were watching so much, they were like, we have to figure out what's, you know, what's this obsession about. So, right. Yeah, my brother just introduced me to like, hardcore hip-hop and, like, Rage Against the Machine, like, all, all the music oh, of the wow. 90s. So that was my influence. Right. Like, but, yeah, you know, you always want to do or be, like, well, usually, like, cool, like your older sibling. But this brought you to the right. OC. <laughs> it brought me to the yeah. OC, and I'm very happy yeah. about it. Very sweet. Very you, sweet. you also said your favorite <laughs> episodes are the Nana and the Malpisode. I mean, I do mm-hmm. think that na- the Nana is one of my favorite favorite characters and just something that made the show so unique. What are, what was your take? Oh, I know. I mean, I just, that whole episode when they go to Miami, I mean, she is just such a powerful woman and she's so funny. And I love Sandy so much when he's the ultimate dad and then seeing, you know, how he was raised up and what his relationship with his mom um, was, was super fascinating because it just informs you a lot about him. Um, But just Seth and the Nana together. I mean, they're just like, (laughs) the most amazing duo and when Seth yeah. is with you know the elderly people playing um what's the game yeah. shuffleboard board. <laughs> yes it's just iconic and then the whole mess with the um MTV you know music situation that's going on it's just too good but Seth and the Nan are I think you know yeah they're one of my favorites for sure they're they're basically peers because Seth really is just an old man at heart <laughs> yes. yes well that's <laughs> So is Josh, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Josh and his grandpa sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good old souls. Was that shot actually in Miami too? Or do you guys know? Yeah. yeah. Was that? Yeah. yeah. It was. Okay. So it's, yes, it was shot in Miami. And Christine, it's so funny because I wasn't in Miami in the episode, but I made sure to get myself there. And we talked about it on that episode of the podcast where I was promoting a nightclub. Like I got in some nightclub to like make sure they would fly me out so I would be in Miami while they were all filming. Because Adam and I were still dating at the time. Like, no, 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 you guys are not going to Miami without me. Oh (laughs) my God. Yeah, and at the time, Josh's girlfriend who, you know, became his wife later, uh, 
went yeah. too. So her and I just hung out in Miami while they all <laughs> shot the show. <laughs> that is incredible. So you two, you got like some time off and you just got to enjoy it. We got to hang out while they were shooting. I promoted a nightclub. <laughs> a nightclub, which like, why not? You were why not? like, that makes sense. Why wouldn't you? I mean, <laughs> I know. Pretty silly. They're one Pretty of a silly. kind. <laughs> right, well, exactly. I love it. <laughs> no, but I love, I love, yeah, I was curious if they just faked it because you guys ended up doing, um, for the first season, it was all, it was real houses. Or, you know, the pool house and everything was all mm-hmm. real, right? And then it ended just up Just the staged, pilot. Or- so Only. the pilot just was the pilot. real. Yeah. Okay. And then they built stuff on stage. Like the pool house, everything you see is on a stage. Right. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy. Well, just like you thought the pool behind Melinda was if you asked if it was real. I know. I, had, I was just like, it, I don't know. It looks very peaceful it does. and serene. You know, is, this, I mean, it this- is real. Wink, wink. I mean, you know what it's like on sets where they put, you know, these huge pictures of downtown New York or or the yes. beach or something. And it's it's an actual photo of something real where they actually recreated a the ocean with a wall and these funny little put like little shiny pieces of plastic to look like the the waves. And apparently we've been told we'll we'll actually talk to one of our directors of photography, but with the HD cameras today, because we were shooting on Super 16, I don't think we would have gotten away with it now. Today, they would have had to do oh, something wow. slightly different. But yeah, there was there was definitely some tricks. Although in these this episode or the next episode, there was one or two shots where for the first time, it looked pretty fake to me. I don't know if you noticed that, Rachel. So yeah. Wait, what, what this, oh. like the sunset with Ben back yes. there? Was it that? Yes, yes I thought that, too, but I don't remember. I don't remember which episode that is. I know we we're doing two, two today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. But I'm gonna have to re watch. Yeah, that yeah. And I mean, it can be, be pretty a tricky. And tell us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we uh, we really tried very very hard to have you come in for the mall episode, your favorite episode, but um, scheduling did not work. So we are on. I know. The season three, the aftermath. Why don't we get into this episode? Oh, okay. Ryan and Marissa deal with the aftermath of Trey's shooting, who is now in a coma, and the district attorney is pressuring to get the full story. Meanwhile, Julie does whatever it takes to make sure Marissa does not go to jail and wants to know what the status is of Caleb's will. And Kirsten is still in rehab and meets a friend, Charlotte, directed by Ian Toynton, written by Josh Schwartz and Bob DeLorenis. Original air date, September 8th, 2005. Rachel, gone are the days of us actually recording on the day, the same day that they yeah. premiered because we've jumped forward in months. months. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sometimes when we do right. the episodes, um, Christine, we we like are on the same day that they actually aired. Like when we were in May, it's like, oh, it's exactly episode. like 17 right. yeah. years later, whatever it is, 18 years. Yeah. Wow. So, you yeah. know, guys, That's season incredible. season three is, you know, there's a collective I guess, attitude towards it being maybe one of the lesser seasons. I personally like it, but Josh has actually been vocal and about, you know, some things that could have been better or, I mean, he's he's basically said that, right, Rachel? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But he, he always is like, oh, it's season three. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Does he give specifics on why? Or I guess we can get into all of that. But he knows what he would have done differently. We had a new, um, the, the new president of Fox, Peter Liguori. Um, you know, he, he, and also it didn't just start with him. Gail Berman was the president of Fox um, before. And Desperate Housewives had just come out. And it was a phenomenon. And people were going crazy and nuts about it. And it was definitely, um, you know, the network always gives notes to the show and they were, you know, good for me. They wanted some Julie Cooper-esque Desperate Housewife type kind of antics. Mm -hmm. And then it was, the note was given to Josh. And this is a quote. We had a new network president who wanted us to introduce a more adult soap storyline, suggesting that the success of Desperate Housewives at the time pushed the network in that direction. I think we just started making a different show. We were trying to make a show that delivered on the melodrama. He said he thought the show became the very thing we made fun of, which is, hmm. you know, kind of an interesting, um, I guess it's an interesting um, I take on it. And 
Although it, I mean, this show definitely this as as you as you get into these couple episodes, you do notice there's quite a few villains that are introduced mm. as we get into these. So, I love Peloton. They have a team of world class instructors ready to motivate you twenty four seven. Which on some days I really do need that extra motivation. I actually have needed that <laughs> recently, and I love to mix it up because I need variety. Ali loves cardio bar classes are Julie Cooper worthy. <laughs> and Jermaine Johnson does a great boxing class. Peloton instructors are highly trained fitness pros who motivate you through every workout. Whether you are a regular at the gym or someone who is new or getting back into working out, whatever your fitness level, Peloton instructors don't just teach, they motivate. I love Cody Rigsby's pop class workouts. It's the perfect playlist to motivate me to work out. I need some good music, people. You're more likely to stick to a workout routine you enjoy. So Peloton makes every class fun. So it feels like you're hanging out with friends. Peloton has just fit perfectly into my life, whether I'm looking for a quick 10-minute upper body stretch or sleep meditation before I go to sleep. Agreed. Right now is the perfect time to try out Peloton. The Peloton Bike Plus is now $500 less. It's best price yet, including free delivery and setup. And there are more game-changing prices available on the original Peloton Bike and Peloton Tread. Visit OnePeloton.com to learn more. While most children's vitamins are filled with five grams of sugar and can contribute to a variety of health issues, Haya is made with zero sugar and zero gummy junk, yet it tastes great and is perfect for picky eaters. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. I always put vitamins in Briar's lunch as her treat because they look like, you know, well, they were treats before. Now, this is actually the right treat. Haya has all the good stuff, none of the bad stuff, and it looks like candy. Yeah. I mean, I was shocked to learn that so many kids' vitamins have so many unwanted or unneeded ingredients, and Haya has everything you do want and need. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. We've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com slash the OC. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash the OC and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Anyway, let's get into that story, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, so we're just dealing, right, the aftermath of Trey's shooting. What did you do, actually? Do you remember watching the episode where Marissa shoots Trey? Because we had to wait all summer, right? That, right, because that's when things, it was, was it released weekly back in, I mean, yes. I, we had it on DVD, so I oh. would just, you know, keep, yeah, keep so on. You weren't, I didn't you weren't have to wait. Like, live. Yeah. Oh, so you got no, to binge it. No. You got to binge it like I, properly. No, when I say binge, like, yeah, it was <laughs> proper binging because we, we went to the mall and we bought all, you know, all the seasons that had come out by then because uh, I got, yeah, so I had the luxury of just, I didn't have to wait. So yeah, it was a pretty good, it was a pretty good cliffhanger for the audiences watching it yes. live on television, waiting all summer and is he alive? Is he, de is yeah. he dead? And yes, yeah, so we get into that as, you know, the episode begins and it's really eerie and it's shot kind of echoey and apparently it's, you know, Trey is barely alive and we see from Ryan's POV that, that we hear all the conversations and, and just this kind of hectic aftermath of, and very quickly done, thankfully. And then we, Ryan wakes up and it's a dream, but for a second, did you think it really is a dream or did it really happen? And then he lets us know that obviously it really did happen. That would have sucked if it was just all a dream, right? That would have been really so. <laughs> that would have been pretty messed up if Josh was like, just like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would have been really messed up. We, yeah. We're too invested at this point. Like, I also feel like the season three people, like, we were proper fans. Like, we. <laughs> like we're in it, we're in it, you know what I mean? Like we all showed up, we were all invested. So I feel like Josh, you know, he couldn't he couldn't do that to us. No, he couldn't do that. Especially that was like 
one of the most famous scenes from the show was, you know, when Marissa shoots Trey and the song and everything. But I know. <laughs> There's been so be amazing uh, memes and, and uh, yeah. recreations of it. I don't know if you guys have seen them, but... Oh, yeah. They're pretty... We've seen, pretty we've seen some of them. It's so funny. And it's just like, it's just a testament to, you know, what the show kind of... How many people it sort of reached. But we also we also see Summer and Marissa in the pool just the same way at the <sighs> pool, the same way we saw them in season two. And you can just yeah. feel the heaviness that Marissa's feeling. But leave it to Summer to go, how hot is it, Orion, to defend your I honor? Know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like oh Marissa's man. like, um, <laughs> it's a little too soon, Summer, right? I know. Yeah. I shot like, someone. I shot summer. someone. Yeah, I, <laughs> I shot someone some. I was like, that is a quote right there. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. She's like, oh, okay. No problem. We were like on. senior year. It's so yeah. set up so well. Like the way it's set up, it's just like, okay, we know we're in for a ride. Right. It's right. also just so great that it starts exactly the same as season two. But, and, and you know, let's not forget that Marissa is still, you know, I keep saying, I can't tell you how many times I'm going to say this today, Rachel, uh, that mm. therapy, just therapy in big letters, everyone needs it. And poor Marissa. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I mean, she's still dealing with all of this and she's, it's like I her know. inside her gut, like she can't even describe in detail, like what's going on? You know, she, you, you can just tell that something's heavy. And of course something's heavy. Right. He may or may not wake up. What's going, what is going to happen in the future? And that unknown just causes so much anxiety. Well, all of it. What about him like trying, attempting to attack her? Yeah. You know, I mean, all of it is. Right. Yeah. Imagine that weighing on you as a 17 year old or however, she must be 17. Right. Right. But anyway, it's, it's a lot and there's so much to it. Um, one of the biggest things with this whole Trey shooting is, you know, the attorneys are in this episode and they're trying to get the real story, even though they've mm -hmm. been told the real story. But Julie in this episode, Melinda. Oh, yes. <laughs> holy <laughs> shit. I mean. You go all out. She's making all the stops. I and know. it's incredible. <laughs> all the stops. It's pretty, I mean. I don't even know what to say. It's like so... No, I know. It's so extreme. How did it feel like tapping into that? I mean, she is like the one we love to hate. Oh my gosh. She's so okay. smart. She's so calculated. So you guys, I mean, tell me your impression of this. So in the last episode, I had just said, she's, she's not the antagonist anymore. She's the protagonist. I stand corrected. So, of course, they want her to be, um, you know, per notes from the network. Of course, the first person you go to is Julie Cooper resorting mm -hmm. right. to her old ways. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and, and the fa it's so fascinating because she's like, she has no problem saying, I'm going to try it this way and see if it works. Like, I'm just going to throw it and see if it sticks. And who cares who gets hurt in, the, in, in her path? This destruction, this Tasmanian devil who... Already, you know, we've got this DA who, like you said, who's decided that Marissa's story lacks credibility, which is so, you know, it's it's great for television, but it's so simplistic that, you know, that, you know, there are so, there are so, there are such, you've got two witnesses who said exactly what has happened. And for a DA to go, mm -hmm. hmm, I don't believe it. I, you know, it's just TV writing, I guess. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> yeah. but Julie literally says, we've got to convince him that Marissa didn't do it. And Jimmy's there going, yeah, but she already said it. You know, even though mm -hmm. he's so questionable, he's got this little voice of reason, I think, throughout this. Because we haven't had a voice who's in Julie's ear going, um, Julie, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah, he's got yeah. this little voice going, yeah. um, she already said it. She's like, yeah, but whatever. Yeah. We're going to go my way. And that's, <laughs> this is a survivor. <laughs> you know, this woman who's like, I mean, you haven't been through what I've been through. You know, right? Right. Did you always kind of like keep, fall back on that? Kind of like she's just always trying to protect the family and the status and just, you know, she doesn't want to go back to where she came from. Oh, totally. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah. But when it comes to, you know, Julie talking about like, Marissa, you don't know what you've done. Or all people yeah. care about is a scandal. They don't care yeah. about the details of what happened. They care about, the fact that you got that that you shot someone, 
I think there's right, so much yeah. truth to that, that it doesn't matter yeah. the circumstances or that, or how you got there or that you were in a defense mechanism or whatever. Julie, and also Julie knows that because she had the porn debacle, but she bounced back from <laughs> right. it. And she's right. literally trying to protect everyone from, yeah. from anything that she went through, which honestly is somewhat of a mistake as a parent. You've got to let kids go through the journey that they're yeah, on. Exactly. But, right, yeah. but yeah, so she's, <laughs> she, but Did she, you, do you and know she it? was just kind of open to Jimmy coming back as well. Do you think she just <laughs> at that point was just like, okay, maybe we might be that happy family again. Or she, or what do you think that yeah, was Yeah, Is there another, another motive? What do you think, Mindy? Uh, oh yeah. She's totally in on, because, because we've, she loves Ju- Jimmy. Jimmy is the love of her life no matter what. Uh-huh. And, but you yeah. know, him showing up and is definitely that, um, it's very questionable. And she's, she's smart. I would think she's smart enough to question it in the back of her mind. I think Julie kind of knows that he's back mm-hmm. or, but she's, mm-hmm. but she, on the surface, she's like, I'm getting the money from Caleb. The, it, you know, the money is right. what gives her, gives her that, um, security. Julie knows that she can survive anything. She just is going to make sure that she doesn't go back to being penniless. And even if she becomes mm-hmm. penniless, she's still not, she's still not going to, you know. I feel like she is smart enough and she knows that him showing up at the door there, it's a very Jimmy thing. Like he's, mm. you know, it's, he's kind of in and out. It's a little convenient sometimes and he's doing it with the right intentions, but I feel like she just knows. Um, that there might be some... I think she's... I think there's some wishful thinking there. I mean, also, don't forget, yeah. I mean, they were falling back in love when he says... Yeah. Because she was married he and he says, I've got to go before I make it worse. And she's like, please don't uh-huh. go. So you know that when the heart ruling over the mind thing, you know? Oh, yeah. And yeah. so yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no doubt in her mind that they're going to have this financial stability and they can rebuild their family. So... I, I'm sure there's some small little, um, you know, voice in her that's saying, hmm. But also she still is in this part in her, this part of her journey is reliant on so much of a financial security. Like her money is yeah. up, her yeah. priorities yeah. aren't like, happiness and spirituality no. and centeredness. It's all money, money. No, no. Marissa's way yeah. down here somewhere, you know. She, yeah, she, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. She hasn't Money's gotten... definitely number one for No, you. she's she hasn't gotten there. I mean, if we're going to, you know, and so if we, if we stay on Julie's storyline, you know, when she hears about Trey mm-hmm. going, waking up, after she visits, you know, the after they visit the Newport group and she's trying to get money out of, you know, she wants to know exactly how much money, which was kind of a funny scene. She's like, like flat out. That just was an total. incredible scene. <laughs> like <laughs> one million, two million, three million. What is it? You blinked. Well, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> the guessing game was incredible. I right. thought that was so much fun to shoot. Right. Oh, yeah. That would, I mean, Tate came back and Rachel will tell you that. I just take. She's a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> just a huge fan. Yeah, we we, we just, all are. We all are. But Mindy, when she works with Tate, I mean, there's just like a little sparkle behind her eyes. Yeah, I, I, and when I talk he about him, I get together. kind of pink in the cheek. She does. She gets like. Oh, yeah, she, blushes. she blushes. She blushes. It it's so very much. cute. Another time, another oh. place. Oh. Yes, <laughs> Jimmy and Julie for life. <laughs> Spin off. But yeah, can, exactly. okay then. Can, but the fact that okay, can we talk about the scene in the in the hospital though? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, it starts on your like metallic magenta heels or something. They're like very, you know. And you're like, oh boy, here she comes. Okay, yes, so I do, here she comes. Do you remember? <laughs> I, this became the strangest scene for me personally. Not in this. Not not just in this show. So the first time we saw that somebody did it, it was when Julie. And Luke were hooking up and she comes down the hallway of the school and and it starts on her feet and you pan up and she's wearing like a Chanel suit. And he's yes. like, right. yes. and he's like, hi, hi, Miss, uh, Miss um, she's like, yes. don't address me in school. And then she goes, meet me later. Well, then they, we did yes. it on this day and I remember it. 
kind of vividly. It was like my first scene back or something when we started the new show. And it then turns into this scene of her saying, you know, hello, Trey. And she closes it and she starts threatening him with this pillow, right? I know. You guys, this is exactly the weirdest thing is that I did a show called Nikita. That's Amanda, this character I did. And they started (laughs) doing, they did shoes on Amanda all the time. And she's a sociopath, psychopath. And I was watching the performance and I went, oh my God, that's Amanda. (laughs) Because it was like she turned into this real evil like I could kill you right now character. And I was like, and and, and I remember somebody telling me, um, one of the people at the show saying, I don't like that Julie all of a sudden turned into this grabbing a pillow and wanting to smother, threaten him. But you got, she, th- we needed this scene. He, he tried to rape his yeah. daughter. What would Julie do when we find out that yeah. he was trying to rape his daughter, her, her daughter? You would try to kill him. <laughs> and threaten him. And... I, I mean, it was right. very soapy, but it, it I don't know, it kind of worked. What do you think? I feel like I'm talking a lot. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love the the train of thought. I just keep it coming. I, <laughs> I mean, I think I, as a, I mean, I'm not a parent. I don't like, I don't know, you know, uh, how you guys would react. But I, if that happened to like my sister or something, I would definitely do something like that. And if I had Julie Cooper's personality and, and that oh. mindset, I mean, and easily, heels. Easily she, and he heals. <laughs> I would walk in and I, oh, it was such a freaking good scene. I, I think I would have definitely done the same. Where I don't know if I, I, I don't think it was far off. I don't think it was too soap opery. I think it's pr- pretty realistic <laughs> from wh- wh- how we've known Julie to be until this point. It's just funny that like her weapon is a pillow. <laughs> right. Well, Which, she picks a pillow. It'd be up a and, slow death. Is, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be, it'd be a slow, slow death for sure. So, but it's well, just it's yes. kind of funny. If if she because I guess in the timeline he wakes up, he's woken, he's up, and for some reason Julie's the first person he talks to, and <sighs> she she basically says this is how you can make it. She threatens him, but she also offers him this is how you're going to make it right. Mm-hmm. And I guess Trey thinks, mm-hmm. how do I make it up to her? I do feel bad about what happened. And right. not only is $20,000, I guess is a lot of money to Trey. And he can actually protect, I think he actually believes that. Don't you? That he yep. can help Marissa? Well, because then- I do see in this scene, I have to say like, obviously Logan is a fantastic actor. But you can see Mm -hmm. that inside him, he does care. Like, he's not like an evil person, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, And you see him kind of going through it in his mind. And that's why it makes sense. Like, he can help Marissa. Right. Like, because of what he did and everything else. I mean, she shot him for crying out loud and he still wants to help her. But it's all kind of coming from, like, this place where you're like, oh, I have a little bit of empathy for this character. Rakuten is an online shopping platform that rewards you for shopping. You can get and earn cash back at over 3,500 stores in every single category, like fashion, beauty, electronics, home essentials, travel, dining, subscription services, and so much more. Earning cash back when you shop is a no-brainer. The best part about Rakuten is that it deposits your cash back directly into your PayPal account, or they can send you a check. Your membership is free and it's really easy to sign up. Start all your shopping trips at Rakuten.com or get the Rakuten app to start saving today. Want a new credit card but not sure how to choose? Credit Karma can help you zero in on the right option for you and apply with more confidence. They partner with a wide range of card issuers. So you can be sure that you are exploring all sorts of options. Credit Karma helped me find a credit card by comparing offers to other companies. It was such a great tool and it gave me the confidence I needed when applying for the right card for me and my lifestyle. I get it. Credit Karma uses your credit profile to show you offers that are tailored to your financial situation. It's 100% free and won't affect your credit scores while you research. Personally, I went to purchase my own private jet and I went, I'm just kidding. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so I enrolled in their free credit monitoring, which was so useful for me to have as a reference when, when I'm thinking about a big purchase like my private jet or just to monitor my credit, you know? Rachel made it funny. <laughs> Ready to find the card for you? Head to Credit Karma and check out your personalized mix of offers today. Go to creditkarma.com or the Credit Karma app to find the card for you. 
That's creditkarma.com. That reminds me of something that the DA said, you know, when he said to, um, to, when he was interviewing all the kids and he said to Ryan, you know, but your fingerprints were on the gun. And I thought, well, Marissa shot it. So she'd have gunpowder on her fingers and Trey held it. So everyone else had fingerprints on it too. So I don't, mm-hmm. that just, right. That, I mean, come right. on the DA. Yeah. <laughs> I love Sorry. I love your analyzations of the DA. You're like, this does not add up. And we need to address By the way, this. both of the lawyers, like in a scene in the veranda or whatever at your house, like they're dressed basically exactly the same. It almost their suits look like a I uniform. Know. They had like same color ties and everything. I like clocked that. I was like, that's an interesting choice. So then we have like the core four in this episode, right? And where Summer, like at the beginning, she's like, no, we're gonna make this year all time. Like we should have fun because they've had a, what you would call a rough summer. <laughs> um, and we go out on the sailboat and I, I don't really remember being on the sailboat, but I remember the beach after and you see all of us having a really good time. And I remember us genuinely just having fun with each mm-hmm. other. And it was like, we weren't even shooting the show. We were just playing around on the beach. You, you could tell. tell you could like, tell yeah. that it was just... Yeah. Misha, Ben, Adam, and Rachel, especially yeah. when Ben goes, sad. <laughs> Makes fun of me. Yeah. Because yes. I was like, yes. that's... Was that improvised? <laughs> yes. That's Ben. <laughs> it had to be, right? Yeah. Yes. That was Ben just making fun of me. <laughs> right. And and it's, it, you know, because they probably they just, you know, how they do. They say, like, just go play. And they had the cameras. And then in the editing room, they pick and choose. And they use that. And I thought, it's so sweet that they use that little thing of Ben, but yeah. it was more Ben and, and less Ryan because we haven't seen Ryan do that, right? <laughs> no, I love that they kept that. And it's always Same. great to see Ben lighter, you know, like more like himself and, you know. But and um, do, you, do you not I, remember I, being on that actual sailboat? Because you were. I, kind, I feel like I kind of do. It's a big sailboat. Yeah. And I'm thinking, like, yeah. they actually took it out, I guess, and we're sailing. Yeah, and I'm sure the guys and, and they they did a they did an overhead shot, and and yeah. obviously the the real seamen. I can't believe that was right. a joke. Remember? I know. I didn't get that or, until like yeah, a few years when ago. when you were older. That was, yes, I was older. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I never understood that joke, and there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that always happens, right? When you watch things younger and then you watch them later, you're like, oh. Yeah, same with like Disney and stuff. I'm like, oh. Totally. Uh, yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. <laughs> no, but this is a very heavy episode with some extremely yeah. heavy things. So I thought it was a wonderful respite from, from the seriousness of it and the song For No One by Ian Broody. And then there was this beautiful scene with Marissa sitting there and, yeah. and Ryan, you know, asking, you know, what do you think? I mean, she has, she's, you can still, still tell that there's something off. Every time you see Marissa, she's kind of yeah. looking out towards something and she's just keeping yeah. on this brave face and still having some PTSD. And Well, she may have killed someone still. <laughs> I feel like they always have such a hard time communicating with each other. Mm. And in that scene, I really wanted them, I mean, they have some great scenes later in the episode, but like they really, I guess that's, you know, we're... Um, Johnny comes in a little bit, but they never really talk about the feelings and the deeper things that are going on. You're so right. Right. And that's what Seth actually, this voice of reason when, you know, when Ryan and Seth went to see Trey at the hospital and, you know, wasn't that when and Seth was like, is, is this where he says you're going to have to talk about it? You're going to have to talk about it with Marissa? At some point he says yeah. you're going to have to talk about it because it's important yeah. that you talk about it. He's like, look how much a comic book came between me and Summer something's got to give. Mm. And mm-hmm. this this idea that it's a, it's so important for them to talk and that here's the big T word, therapy. <laughs> but, you know, and also let's point out that, that Ryan, yeah. you know, he went to see Trey in the hospital and he says, man, when back when this happened, I wanted to kill him and now I wish I could give it all back. He is feeling so much shame and guilt and responsibility mm-hmm. and that survivor guilt, everything that goes along with like, this happened yeah. because of me and how do I yeah. fix this? And and what happens if Trey wakes up? What happens if Trey doesn't wake up? You know, all this uncertainty right. is just really difficult. Oh, you know, I had a question for you. 
This is just kind of a side note. I thought it was kind of funny. When they were at home and they're playing video games and they can't watch mm-hmm. video games because of the vi- uh, with violence because yeah. of what's yeah. happened. And they're watching right. baseball and or uh-huh. they're playing baseball. And Seth goes on this rant about, oh, God, this can't sustain people. Is this really going to catch on? Do you know if Adam or Josh aren't baseball fans? Josh goes to Dodger games. That, okay. Josh is actually Josh is actually a sports fan. Like he he gets he loves the Patriots. <gasps> he goes to Dodger games. Like he likes sports. Brody is not so much. Huh. Okay. Or he used to not be. I don't <laughs> think he wasn't like a big sports guy. But yeah, I thought it was pretty funny. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. That character would definitely not be into baseball. Sad. <laughs> <laughs> But, I you know, think. he does have a surfboard in his room, though. He has a shortboard in his room. And he does. does. Seth shortboard? Well, Brody surf? is a big surfer in real life. So he maybe is. that's okay. why. But Adam's <laughs> a really like, good surfer. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Yeah. Shortboards yeah. are amazing. Yeah. I know. I wish I could do it. My daughter's taking surf mm-hmm. lessons right now. And I'm like, go for that's it. That's incredible. Girl. Yeah, it's pretty cute. But I'm terrified of waves. <sighs> so not for me. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's, I think that's one of the best things you can do for a kid. Get them into surfing early or young lifeguards or junior lifeguards yeah. be- yes. and, and yeah. take out yes. that, um, take out fear. that, that fear like- of it. Because, or if you get into yeah. that, I did not do that for CG. And now we got munched a few too many times. <laughs> so she's not a big oh, fan gosh. of it. I'm not either. <laughs> but listen, guys, so it worked, right? So it worked. Trey tells, wakes up and yes. tells the police that yes, indeed. Ryan shot me. Right. And Ryan just, and of course, Sandy's like, what are you telling me the truth? And he's like, what's the point? You know, he just gives up, takes off. And then Julie starts celebrating with mimosas and Jimmy. (sighs) And Jimmy, Jimmy's like, "Eh, it's a little convenient there, eh, buddy? (laughs) (laughs) She's like, what? Mimosas. Let's, you know, she's elated. Does she think that Marissa's going to go along with this? Like, or, or she thinks that she can manipulate Marissa to do this because this is what he's mm-hmm. saying and she's got it all packed, you know. I don't know. It's interesting what she thinks she can get away with. Do you remember when you were shooting it, what you were thinking? If at that mm-hmm. moment, like, she fully, like, was so detached and just really... I think, I think, I think when you are, Julie, I think she's had to, she's had to, uh, She's had to, mo- let's see, what's the word? Um, she's had to to navigate through life in this way and uh-huh. damned, yeah. you know, she everything always works out for her. And if it doesn't, because ultimately you'll see her, you know, when, when, it, when it doesn't work out, she's like, yeah. Yeah. oh, well, she, she doesn't get all pissed off. She's like, well, we'll have to just on to the next because, yeah. but it's still worth a shot. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't become, you know, destitute and and like, oh my God, I didn't get my way. She's like, well, you know, yeah. she just, right. she's very flexible, I guess. But, you right. know, Ryan decides to, um, you know, do the old Ryan pack up and take off thing. <laughs> yep. But this time the kids want to go with him and Marissa's mm-hmm. got the idea to do it on the boat. Right. To sail away. <laughs> Which, of course, they're like, just until Trey can t- change his, his mind. And I guess they, you know, they don't that they don't really get away with that, do they? No, no. But they're also right. so young. I sometimes forget their age because they've been through so many things. But then in, in times like these, you're like, oh, you're reminded sometimes by kind of that. Like, yeah, they, I feel like they definitely romanticized it a little bit and didn't fully think about it because they're always they're obviously just kids, right? They're like, yeah, well. But go. I also love how much Marissa has been standing up for Ryan, and mm. you know, from that. But I feel like so much of it has been. Ryan kind of helping out Marissa. And I feel like it's... And he, and he feels even more that he has, as as we see how he has... Yeah, they need therapy. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. And not with Oliver. Not with... Oh, gosh. The, not with him waiting in the waiting room. Oh, man. to do couples therapy, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. <laughs> and now that he's in jail and Sandy's there and, you know, he's doing his best to not shake the motherfucker. Sorry for going, are you kidding yeah. me? Sorry for, <laughs> <laughs> sorry for Gussie. But I mean, I'm just so empathetic of Sandy because he's like, well, yeah. look, this isn't over, but you're doing everything you can to look guilty. But then we cut yeah. to actually one of my favorite scenes in this whole episode 
which is Sandy meets Jimmy Cooper at the Yacht Club, which, by the way, I believe this is the new set for us in season three, the Yacht Club, and then it continues mm. through the end of the series. But he's he's like, hey, so, Jimmy, because Sandy put on his his superhero lawyer hat and sat down going, yeah. huh, what is going on here? I've got to, you know, I mean, I yes. guess that's what lawyers have to do, right? They have to come up. If Ryan's telling the truth, then what's really going on? And yeah. He says, why would Trey suddenly change his story unless somebody paid him? Which is, you know, mm. and, and Jimmy admits it. And then he yeah, goes, yeah. Jimmy, I know. what are you doing here in Newport? And he calls out his friend for like, you just show up. It's so satisfying when he has this power and he has these like amazing one-liners. It's like when Sherlock like solves the case. It's right. like people <laughs> are like clapping. We're like, yes, this is what we needed. We needed Sandy back as like the best dad and like the ultimate kind of like superhero almost. I and know. And Jimmy needs to wake up because Jimmy is, you know. Well, he admits it's time. it. He was like, look, <laughs> he says, he says, uh, I, I'm just trying to keep my family together. I've got a lot going yeah. on. And Sandy yeah. goes, dude. Yes. I have a wife in rehab, a kid in jail. And I'm dealing with yeah. this, this. I think I trump what's going on in your life. Emmer yeah. Effer. Perspective. <laughs> but Emmer no, I, I just love him. I love him in this scene. Well, my favorite and also hardest scene to watch in this episode is when Trey, well, when uh, Bluest Light by Block Party starts playing <sighs> and then it carries through to Trey getting on the bus and Ryan going to try to see him. Yeah. I mean, did you cry? Oh my God, every time. I was going <laughs> to send you, like, I was fully crying again. And I don't know how many times I've seen that episode. <laughs> and when that music kicks in, and when Ryan comes and Trey is gone, and they oh. run, ugh, the look in Ryan's eyes, but also oh. Trey's, like, there's oh so much gosh. behind it. Both of their eyes. There's no words, and it's just so powerful. And my favorite is also after when Ryan just, like, kind of collapses onto Sandy. Oh, we haven't seen that before and we, we never will again. No, uh-huh. that's one of my favorites. Yeah, super of the vulnerable. Whole, of the whole episode. You yeah. know, and it, it really was very powerful. Um, but because right before that, when Summer and Marissa get in being candy stripers and Marissa walks into that <laughs> hospital room and... And you're lying to Summer about the uh, the sick people. Oh yeah, um, you can't. I, I can't catch. Like, yeah, like about a gunshot wound yeah, because I can't yeah. catch that. Yeah, you can't catch that. Yeah, can't catch that. <laughs> that. And she's like, okay, so funny. Yeah, but Marissa is so brave, and she walks in, and and Trey's like, oh, and I couldn't tell if this is him trying to joke. He's like, you come to finish me off or finish it. And, of course, it's a joke. <laughs> ha ha. But. <laughs> but, you know, when he says she, and I, he genuinely was like, I'm trying to protect you. And she offered me a way out. And of course, that's what we find out. She's like, what? Oh, gosh. My mom? Of course my mom did this. But, you know, obviously to make it right, I thought about this. And you can see just this loss that's going on with, with Ryan. You know, the fact that it's so sad because he's like, he is my last family member and he's gone. Because Mm -hmm. what Mm -hmm. if he were to somehow encourage him to stay, then Marissa would have to see him. Like he he said, you should never have to see this guy ever again. Right. And he understands logically that he has to leave, but he's still grieving the loss of his entire blood family. Right. I mean, he has a new family, but there's nothing, you know, it's he shouldn't avoid it. He needs to lean into that grief, go to therapy. (laughs) And but you know, I wondered, I wondered how. Trey, I mean, obviously we're led to believe that he just ups and leaves. Wouldn't he have some kind of consequence for having the gun or the attempted rape or... Yeah, there's a lot of holes here. (laughs) Yeah. I know. I thought about that too. Like what... what, In in, in real life, they would have had to go look for him again, right? Right. Was the gun legal? Did he... I mean, there's there's always something. But, But then again, the DA has to look at all of the evidence and say, this is, we can prosecute this. And maybe mm-hmm. once all of this happened, they were like, yeah, not worth the time. I don't know. Maybe it's just, right. you know, but, but, you know, in the meantime, there is Kirsten. In rehab. In rehab because Ugh. 
Yeah. You know, when we first, the first thing we see her is, um, hi, I'm Pearson. I'm an alcoholic. And she's in this beautiful spot. And she, and we get to understand where she instantly says she attributes everything to, it begins with my father and it ends with my father and everything mm -hmm. in between. Mm -hmm. And then we realized mm -hmm. that she was a perfectionist and she had low self-esteem and she was never good enough. And so we kind of get some understanding of, of what, what was going on behind her, behind her addiction, right? Right. And then she- And we- And Charlotte's there. Right. Yep. Then introduce- You just know. Charlotte. By Jer Jerry Ryan, mm -hmm. wonderful actress. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. this is exactly, this was the other thing that Josh was told, that they were told that they needed a female character like a Nicolette Sheridan. Oh. In. Oh. Yeah. They, well, there you they go. were the two storylines. They needed a female, uh, they needed to introduce a female character. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Because yeah. I was like, all right, where are we going with this? Which I, Wait you know what, I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. You can just tell. There's something oh, off. When she and finishes off the line about the, oh, you're never going to be good enough. You just know she's calculated and she's got her. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, and perfectionism isn't about being a good person. Perfectionism is fear of failure. It's actually a very yeah. negative thing to have as um, I admit that I try to be a perfectionist but it's better it's <laughs> better to be okay with failing and be and 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 normalize being messy and normalize being flawed and right. that's kind of where anyway this okay we're not in therapy god <laughs> i love it though i love it those are the most important lessons of all time we have to fall on our faces and be okay with it right did you guys have a lot of like those takes i don't know like if the pace went super fast towards like season 3 like there's a lot to shoot and it was just kind of you were in the characters so much, but did you guys often get those takes where you could just like try whatever and do whatever? Or was it kind of like, we have so much to shoot and we got to be on schedule? I guess. Like those fall on your faces takes. I feel like Brody always did that. Like the whole series, like he would just throw some in there where he just tried things, you know? It depended right. on the actor. It was, there or was. Or you were acting with. <laughs> well, no, they, it was right, definitely, right, right, right. if, if, Adam was always allowed a few takes to do because that's what he came to set with. And where some, yeah, some yeah. of us would just do exactly the way it was written. <laughs> and we weren't as like, creative right. to come up with something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we had a very, very, like, very comfortable, welcoming set. You know what I mean? Like, while we were working. So you always felt like... yeah. If you wanted to, like, we would break a lot, or I would. I mean, and you know, right. we had a very yeah. cool crew, and it was a it was a very welcoming and warm environment. So, right. Right. we definitely could do things, but we we also had a lot of professional people in the cast that just were like, you know, hitting everything, and and it was a well oiled machine. But you know, I I thought it was interesting. This we should point this out. You know, when Sandy comes to see Kirsten. And she, you know, the doctor told her that she could go, but she's afraid to. So she lies about being able to be released. And and Sandy doesn't tell her about Trey and what's going on. And rightly mm -mm. so, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. it's it's like that is something that is highly stressful. And if she's trying to focus on herself, she needs no outside drama. Absolutely. I totally, totally support that. And, um, yeah, but then that last scene with Marissa and Ryan at the lifeguard stand and when he, Ugh. you know, he reminisces about Trey and, and she allows him to talk about their childhood together and what it was me and him against the world. And, and, you know, and she's like, but you have me. And I just wanted to say, just shut up and listen. <laughs> just I know, right. I know, right. <laughs> I know. Cause it's such a rare moment that they have. Like going back to that, what I said about them on the rocks earlier in the episode, like I, they, I wish there were more of those like calm, just like listening and yeah, com conversations between the two of them. They really need moments like that. Like that, yeah. that scene yeah. he talks about his childhood was so powerful. And he says, can we put it all behind us? Which is foreshadowing because 
my answer again is therapy. But, uh, (laughs) but, (laughs) but, but, you know, it's, it's definitely setting it up for what's, there's so, you know, and, and like we've discovered, Josh and Stephanie and, and Bob DeLorenis, they were not going to make it easy for Ryan and Marissa at all. And all of these Mm -hmm. tragedies keep building up and how they navigate this for the, for the rest of this, um, for the rest of the show makes for wonderful television, everyone. It does. (laughs) A a wonderful (laughs) series it was. Well, I think that's, I think that kind of covers the episode, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, if we want to take a second, do you want to see if your sister's done with her work, if she wants to be a part of like trivia or something? Yes. Yes. Hi. Hi. Hello. Put that one in. See if you can, can you hear us? Hi. Hello. Hello. Yeah, it's so nice. Oh, yeah. It's so nice to meet you. <laughs> you too. I'm such a big fan. <laughs> and Aww, I've already told that. <laughs> well, we actually have some trivia from specifically the mall episode. Oh, the mall episode. Yes. 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 Oh, we call it the yes. mall episode, right. but the mall episode. How's that? All right. Yeah. So you guys can try to answer these. Which musician is featured six times on the episode soundtrack? Oh, I'm not good with musicians. You know what? It's a multiple choice. So is it oh. A, a <laughs> Beck, B, Sam Prekop, Prekop, C, Jem, D, Imogen Heap? We know like the lyrics and we know where the songs usually go, but the names of the artists. There's another yeah. name for this episode named after the musician. It's a, it's a, instead of a malpisode, it's called. I'll give you a hint. It's A. (laughs) It's 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 Beck. Do you know who Beck is? No. No. Okay, okay. so Beck, he's a musician and he was debuting his new album and they, everyone heard it first on the OC. They put six of the songs from his new soundtrack on from that his episode. new um, album on that episode. Wow. And they called it the yes. Beck Wow. They call it the Beck oh. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, well, we, learned, Mac, we learned something new today. Yes. But you know just, what? That was tough. That, that was, was a hard tough. One. That was a hard one, yeah. But just to expose us further, I mean, when we were talking about the first episode of season three, we did, we hadn't even heard about or the block. Well, we knew the, the we didn't know that they're the, the, the blue, song, the Lewis scene Light. When, yeah. Yeah, that you didn't know the block. They're called the what? The block after party or block, block party? party? Block party. Yeah. yeah, and apparently they're super famous. We didn't even know that. <laughs> M- music, music is definitely my my weak point. I've had to educate yeah. myself oh, during man. this podcast. <laughs> I tried okay. to give her like a, yeah, I did a game with Mindy once and I was like reading her lyrics from really famous songs from the 80s and she like it, didn't know any of them. It was <laughs> like, okay. It was so was cringy, but funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny that you call her Mindy. I keep thinking that you're going to call her Julie for some reason. <laughs> uh, Julie Cooper, Nicole, wanna... Cooper, Bullet, Atwood. <laughs> yeah. She has many names. Okay, here. I have the next trivia question. Maybe this one will hopefully be a little easier. Who overhears... It's still... They're all from the mall episode, so... Who overhears Summer and Marissa talking about Marissa's feelings for Ryan? Ryan. Oh, yeah. there you go. Very you good. You got it. I didn't even need. I knew we I wouldn't have to do the multiple choice. We yeah. already know he's. So, yeah, we, we don't. We don't need to give you the multi, uh, multiple choice. No, you might you actually just know. know it. Nope. You already know. Okay. okay. <laughs> Next one, Mindy. Go. So, a man from Julie's past shows up with what incriminating item to blackmail Julie with? The porn, porn stuff. The yes, <laughs> the porn. Right. Yep. You got it. <laughs> yeah. Wait, just just for a little extra thing. Do you remember the name of the porn? Is oh it Bruce? God. Oh no, the no, name of the porn. Lance yeah. is the guy. Oh, the, the, the Lance the name is the of guy. The, <laughs> Bruce. The name of her porn. <laughs> oh shit! What was it? The name. If I say of it, you're gonna be like, oh, yeah. it. It, it no, kind of it then, reminds you of Jason Bourne. The title of the the porno was. The porn identity, like the born identity. 
Do you remember that? I just remember the pizza. Wasn't there like the pizza delivery? Yeah, there was the pizza delivery. But I don't you remember guys the remember? Name of like, it. <laughs> no, that's the name. The name yeah. is the porn identity. Oh. <laughs> Okay, that was a really good. That was a really good. Hint. <laughs> that, yeah, I, that kind I, of thing. Okay. What What did we say her name was, you guys? I forgot. It was uh, it was oh, candy something Riverside, candy like the name of her yes. dog in the street. I don't remember. Yeah, it was something Riverside, <laughs> yes. candy Riverside or something. Okay. okay, that was just an extra one. That doesn't count. Okay, what do Seth and Summer argue about while stuck in the mall? I can give you multiple <sighs> choice if well, you need it. Let me know. No, 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 we don't. They're arguing about the letter that Summer got from uh, Zach when he was in Italy. Yay! Uh, Good. Got and it. the Tower of Pisa is on the front of it. And it's sticking out <laughs> so well. And it's just like... Yeah, and Seth thinks that it reads, I love you. <laughs> yeah, right. <And> it doesn't. <laughs> Very good. You guys... You guys did awesome on those. And that was just from the mall episode. I can't imagine if we had like... From the whole series, you would kill it. <laughs> well, yeah. I actually, I I actually found an OC game in a thrift shop recently, and oh my gosh, <laughs> and I opened it, and there was so there was like almost nothing was part, you know, the, the board was there, but all the missing yeah. pieces. So I looked it up online, and I found that some of the trivia there are some cards online that I could um, check out, but Rachel. We have got to hmm. get that game and we've got to play it. Yes. I bet Josh yes. has it. Really? So yeah, I think you can yes. buy it online, but I think we should do that. And maybe we should get some, Some maybe you, you Benedicta, you should come I back and play. I, I bet you'd be really I good at it. I yes. have it. Do you? I think I have it. <laughs> I but it's it. like in Canada. But yes, we have to actually play. It's actually really good thing. trivia questions. I won't know any of the answers. Uh, no, we have to do it at the end well, of this we'll podcast. Be down. I love that Rachel's like, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm going to need you guys. Yeah, sure. you guys have to be on my team because I know nothing. <laughs> so, hey, Rachel, should we do this um, while, while we have them? Should we do this rapid yeah. fire real quick? Why don't you? Yes, rapid fire. Ready? Okay. okay. Seth or Ryan? Seth. Oh, Seth. So, okay. okay. And New York City or LA? New York City. New York City. Uh, favorite all-time scene on the OC? <laughs> you both, like, both sighed like, and we're I like... We, yeah, I know. <laughs> we're like, this is too... No, I was actually just telling my dad what my favorite scene was, like, a minute ago. What? Um, it might be when... Uh, oh, wait. I know. What? For you? It's what I was telling you yesterday. I love the scene. It's in the third season. It's when Marissa's visiting Berkeley... And she's talking to that, I can't remember his name, but that tall brown haired guy. It's when they're at that college party and they're talking, and then that college guy says, everyone belongs somewhere. And then Marissa says, not everybody. Some just get lost. Remember that line? Oh, oh wow. wow. We're, we're not I there yet. I haven't watched it yet, but I will. <laughs> I, have to admit, I have to admit something to our listeners because I have a pretty good memory of this show watching starting this season because we're doing a couple episodes today I was like I don't remember that I don't remember that and I'm laughing out loud and I'm watching it again for the first time so bear with me guys <laughs> <laughs> that's just a part of it that okay did you pick your favorite Christine what was yours I mean there's so many but maybe it would be from the mall episode or it would be when Ryan and Marissa for the, meet for the first time outside uh, and he's like I, whoever whoever you want me to be yeah or yeah. when they drive i mean or oh, i mean there's so many i could go on you can continue <laughs> but from uh, the um, from today's the episode that you discussed today uh, episode one season three is that where sandy says but who would sink that low and city yeah. where that's julie cooper yeah he goes when Jamie it has to be julie yes Exactly. Yeah, yeah that, that's one of my favorite lines as well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, who would sink that low? Oh, Julie. Yeah. <laughs> he put it together. I love that line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, modeling or acting? Acting. Mo acting. <laughs> I, was, I, was just, I was laughing, thinking about myself. Uh, modeling. <laughs> you were quite the actor growing up. Acting. Were you? How cool. Yeah. She was always the one who would be performing. I would always be behind her. And she we would always do sketches together, but she would always kind of like be in the forefront. Yeah, and then Christine <laughs> took over. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> okay, favorite holiday. 
Uh, Christmas, probably. Christmaca. Uh, <laughs> good answer. Chanel or Dior? Chanel. <laughs> dogs. There's or cats? a lot of good Chanel in the show. Oh, dogs. <laughs> yes, dogs. Karaoke dogs. or dancing? Karaoke, dancing. Ooh. Hmm. Sandy or Jimmy? Sandy. Yeah, Sandy. Uh, skateboarding or surfing? Surfing. Oh, <laughs> <There we go. laughs> all right. This that has was our been lovely. <laughs> Apparently, Adam uh, was a good like used to surf a lot because remember he has he a surfboard does. in his room. Oh, it still surfs. Um, yeah, and so. I was just like Seth. I can't envision him surfing, but Adam Brody apparently surfs. Oh. Yes. <laughs> well, you spent way too much time in California. I guess if you do that, you end up surfing eventually, no matter who you are, right? Right, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it comes along with the territory. <laughs> well, ladies, yeah. well, it was such a pleasure to meet you both. And I have a feeling we're going to see you again, Christine and Benedicta, because... Please. We oh, just, you guys know we, the show we, way we, better yeah. than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being a part of our season three kickoff here. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. <laughs> we never would have thought that I'm, two of our guests would be calling in from Norway. Right. So it's, yes. <laughs> Lots of love from Norway. Cool. Yeah. Thank you we so love much. We back on. Yeah, so. definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to need your help because I'm going to be like, you guys, what the heck is happening? All <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got you. We got you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it was so nice to meet you, too. Um, if you're ever in L.A., we have to all hang out. Yeah. No, I would love it. That would be a dream come true. You're all like still OC to me. It would be fun to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So everyone, thank you so much for listening. Follow, rate, and review. Welcome to the OC Bitches, wherever you listen to your podcast. If you like to watch us, check it out on YouTube. Bye, Bye. bitches. Bye. See ya. Bye. 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 Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to start with the pilot episode and catch all of our episode recaps.